I'm going to bring in uh, Mathnasium. And so Mathnasium is your our neighborhood uh, math only um, learning center that teaches kids math the way that makes sense to them. Uh, they just they deliver a customized learning plan designed to address each student's needs and instruction goes beyond traditional math tutoring to really develop understanding um, and also to build a love of math. So you too can fall deeply in love in math. So I'm gonna bring, um, bring in Kama and she's gonna come on um, with us. So she's gonna be joining us and, and Jimmy as well. So they're, they're connecting right now. Um, I'll give them a second to connect. All right. Hello, Kama, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Hi, Jimmy, welcome. Hello, hello, thank you. So we're so excited that you um, are here tonight and you're going to um, show us some really, really fun things with math. Um, so I am going to hand it over to you um, and you're going to wow and amaze us. Um, and I can't wait to see it. Um, and then when you're done, just hand it back over to me and, um, and I'll wrap up for the evening. But I, I can't wait to fall in love with all the cool stuff that you're about to do. So take it away. Thanks. All right, thank you. So welcome everyone to STEAM Week, new to all of us virtual this year. And uh, what we want to do is make sure that you have your box with you and that you didn't open it before yesterday and get out the pack of goodies that Math Museum sent you guys. So we have the Adam Morris Mac. We have the booklet of instructions, a deck of cards, and then you should have a set of polyhedral dice. So we're gonna walk you through some games. The point of these games are to be played at a math night. And math nights were designed to help families, parents, and their students to math at home and math at home responsibly. It absolutely, it says it right in front. Please math responsibly. Using some inexpensive items like a deck of cards, some dice, paper mats, and uh, for your family to have fun then and to build numerical fluency as well as just some math fun. So as we walk you through some different versions, um, you know, we don't know the age group of everyone who's watching. Um, we'll give you some ways to make it a little bit more advanced and a little less advanced. Um, so if you guys get to your booklet, um, the first game that we're gonna play is heads up. And if you are a younger student and haven't studied multiplication yet, you can use the version of addition. And if you are an older student, you can use multiplication. So if you have three people to play the game, you would each get dealt a card. Since we're just in a group of two, you can still play this way. And Jimmy and I will show you this, okay? So Jimmy, here's your card. Okay. And the table becomes the second player. And so what I will do is I will add these two numbers. So the sum of these two numbers I will reveal to Jimmy is 13. And so he is to then using the part on the table as well as the sum of the two numbers going to determine what number is on his, he's holding up on his head, not having seen it yet. So I can't see this. You said it's 13? 13, Jimmy. 13, I see three, so this has gotta be a 10. You're Got right, Jim. Good nice. job, buddy. All right. Sweet. So let's do another one. Sure. We've got, this time we have 20. 20. I've seen eight. I'm going with 12. You got it, Jim. Nice. So that's, this is a really great way, especially using the magnesium cards. You can take out 11s and 12s for younger students if you're only working on numerical fluency through 10, uh, or you can incorporate them for some older students. Um, so that's the first way to play using the heads up addition. And then let's demonstrate with multiplication. Let's do it. All I'm right. Ready. So here's your card. And make sure when you play this game that you have someone on this end giving the, the correct product because they know the multiplication facts. Right? That's right. So let's see. I'm going to be put to the test here. So I'm coming up with now again, we're doing multiplication. So the product of these two numbers is 72. So what do you think, Jim? I see an eight. This has got to be a nine. That is a nine. But how do I know it's a nine? Look at the card. That's a nine. Well, isn't it a six? This well, is a six. If you look inside, I see four here and four here. I know four plus four is eight. And then there's one in the middle. Eight plus one? 
That's nice. Yeah, so make sure when mom and dad make mistakes with the deck of cards, you correct them, okay? Oh, yeah. We've seen it live in person in math night, so make sure you young people are on your toes and keep mom and dad straight, okay? Oh, yeah. So let's do one so more. so proud to see you. Yeah, let's do one more multiplication. Uh, let's see, you know what? Let's, let me see if I can set this one up, Jimmy, because this is another okay. cool thing about the uh, mathnasium cards. Let me give this one back to me, and I'm going to give you this one. Here you go. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we can trick Jimmy, okay? So I'm going to turn this card over, and I'm going to tell him his product is zero. Zero? Well, I see a three. Three times zero is zero. Right. So I'm going to go with zero. Go with zero, Jim. All right, let's see, it let's is. see if you're right. Nice. Now, Boom. let's let me trick, see if I can trick you, Jim. Okay. Let's see. All right, here you go. Here's your card. Now, what if I do that and I tell you the product oh, is zero? This is a zero. That means this could be anything. Yeah. Why can it be anything? If there's there's only one card on your head. Zero times anything is still zero. You tell me the product is zero. It's zero. Oh man. All right, I guess it could be anything then. Should I take a wild guess and see if take I can? Take a wild guess. I'm going to go with two. Two. What is two times zero? Zero. What is 17 times zero? Zero. What is 3,422 times zero? Well, you just said it's zero. <laughs> it's zero. It's zero, of course. So moms and dads, you can always make sure you incorporate zeros. Uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of young kids don't understand the concept of zero. Um, so another great thing about the Mathnasium deck of cards, it comes with the zero uh, included in it. Have anything to add about Heads Up, Jim? Nah, just make sure that if you get really nervous and you're trying really hard to get it right, you don't get the card too sweaty. <laughs> and you don't turn it around and peek. Yeah, no, no peeking. peeking. All right, so the next page in our uh, activity book is sum up and sum down. Jimmy, you got your thinking cap on here tonight? I'm going to try. That's what I'm here to do. Okay, so with this game, again, you can make it very competitive. If two eager friends want to, to go one against the other, put a timer on and see who can get to the higher sum of numbers. If you are just practicing numerical fluency, Pick a set number of cards, so maybe just 10, and have your younger student just add the 10. So let's start without the timer, and I'm just going to pick 10 cards, Jimmy, and okay. you can show them how to do sum up. These are slippery cards, brand new. Brand new. Brand new. All right. Box, just like what you guys got. So we can go very quickly. We can start up very slowly. Lots of ways to make it more advanced and less advanced. All right. So sum up. You want five. to hold that up, maybe? Sure, yeah. Okay. So I got five for the first one. And then two, so seven. And then seven plus ten is 17. Plus zero is still 17. Got to love a zero. Plus three is 20. Plus three again is 23. Plus eight, that's 31. Plus 12. Ooh, 31 plus 12, that's 43. And then 43 plus 3, that's 46. And plus 10, plus 10 is reason. You just keep the 6. This one's 50. So that's one way to play it. Again, make sure you're playing with someone with good numerical fluency skills. You can check your answers. Check answers. <laughs> um, so that's just a very easy way to play it. A more aggressive way is to put Jimmy against a timer. So let's see how high of a sum he can get to in a one-minute timer. You ready for this, Jim? I'm ready. All right. Here we go. Five. Seven. Seventeen. Uh, Twenty-one. Thirty-one. Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Thirty-nine. Forty-two. Fifty. Sixty-two. Sixty-five. Or seventy-five. Eighty-three. Ninety-three. 94, Not, uh, 101, 108, 108, 114, 121, 132, 133, 141, 
153. 158. And 167. Nice job. So oh Jimmy got gosh, up to 167. So Write that number down. And as you guys continue to practice it, get better with it at home, see if you can beat that number. Um, so that's a, a little bit more aggressive way. We'll show you two other very quick ways um, and both involve the sum down. So again, you can start with 100. We'll put the timer away for right now. And you start with 100 and you're going to subtract this from 100. So 100 minus 5, why don't you hold 95. on this time, Jim? Yep, got it. Minus two. 93. Minus one more. 92. 82. 78. Uh, 66. 56. 51. I think I counted 10 cards on this. Is that 10? Yeah. Somewhere so again, you can pick a, a, a definite number of cards and work back from 100 and, and play the game more laid back, or you can get aggressive with it. You ready to get aggressive? I'm ready. All right. So we're going to put him against a timer for one minute, and he's going to start at 100 and then sum down, okay? Here we go. You ready? So ready. if you're at 100. All right. 100. 92. 83. 83. 80. 77. 68. 47. Uh, 27. Uh, 15. 12. 2. Negative seven. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Negative 13. Negative 13. All right. Yeah. Okay. Negative 15. Negative 21. Now it's like I'm going up. Uh -huh. uh, negative 28. Negative 29. Negative 34. Negative 43. Er, 42. Okay. <laughs> negative 52. Oh. Negative 53. All right, we're out of time. So again, remember, it's a lot easier to be on the, the side of the person who's dealing the cards than the one who's doing the math. Wow. So uh, be patient with that person. And again, it's just to have fun and to help you find fun ways at home so you can math at home. We hear so much about reading at home. It's also important to math at home. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sum up, or, sum up or sum down, whichever version you want to play. Uh, the next one, Jim, is the sticky notes number line and the sticky notes fractions. Let's do it. So let's change over to the dice quickly here. You want me to start with the uh, number line? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for younger players, what we're going to do, just pick out a couple of appropriate dice, depending on the age or the math that you've uh, been involved in so far. I'm going to go with maybe these four dice, and you can get creative. So all we're going to do, does anyone know how to read the triangular or, or the pyramid die? You guys know how to read that? I know that. When you have the point, it says the same number all the way around that tip. Yeah, so you're reading the, the number up on the tip, the number that doesn't lie flat on the table or the desk. So in this case, it would be two. I'm sure you all cannot see that at home, um, but you read the number that's on the top, okay? So again, you can get as creative as you would like. Um, roll the dice. You wanna add numbers. Four plus four is eight. Plus seven is 15, plus one is 16. You can write your 16 on your sticky note or a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be a sticky note. And then we'll go again. You can get more creative with the dice. If you wanna talk about place value, you can assign each a place value. 1,454, so another way or version to play it. Jimmy, you want to roll your dice once? I'm ready. See what you got. The same ones that you did. Okay. All right. Looks like I got two fours and two fives. That'll be easy. Four and four is eight. Five and five is ten. Ten plus eight is eighteen. Put that down as well. Okay. So we're each going to take five turns. 
and of each of the terms, we'll write the, the answer on a sticky note, and then we will order those five sticky notes from least to greatest. Oh, that's a better way to put it. Like that? Yeah. I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, okay. uh -huh. All right, let's see what else I got. Let me go with. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take my other three terms. Go for it. Four thousand nine hundred fifty-two. Four thousand nine hundred fifty-two. Big numbers. Got two fives again. Love to see that. And oh, doubles again. Three and three six. Hundred and ten times six. six. I'm gonna I'm gonna accidentally drop one of these dice on the floor. She's a wild one, folks. I'm getting a lot of doubles today. I don't know you about you. Yeah. I've got three rolls of two sets of doubles. Love doubles. Doubles are so much fun. Oh, yeah. All right. How many do you have? I have five. I'm done. Yeah. Take All your right. last roll. Six, five, four, and four. I got another set of doubles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost got it again, too. Let's do 30 times eight. You doing some multiplication in there with yours? Yeah. You better know that All right. So again, at at home, moms and dads, you can take what your students have been recently learning and incorporate it. Jimmy did some multiplication. I tried to mix it up with some place value. You can certainly stick with the uh, smaller numbers for younger folks and talk about place value. And then the point of it is to take your five rolls and get them in order from least to greatest. Do you have yours in order, Jim? I sure don't. Let's see, 240, your greatest is this way? Uh, yes. Okay, 240. I want it for the big. audience, That's left to right. 4,000, 60, 16. That's smaller than 60, 18, it's pretty close. Okay, I think I'm set. Boom, oh. Boom. <laughs> Okay, so that's uh, sticky notes number line. And if we were then to move up maybe to third or fourth grade students uh, who have been introduced to fractions, we can play the sticky notes fractions. Uh, so what we do with fractions to begin with is always leave the numerator as one. And I would pick an interesting die, maybe the 12 sided die for the denominator. So I'm gonna roll, I got one tenth. Why don't you roll yours along and we'll just play together, Jim. That works. I'll roll my 12. You gonna go with 12 also? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I got one fifth. I got one eighth. Mm. I'm getting duplicates. Are you? Yep. And that's good. One yeah. 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 Changing up die in between terms is encouraged. Yeah. Maybe we can do this, Jeff. Work. Are you putting yours in order? I'm putting mine in order. So nice. I'm going from yeah. least over over to the audience left to greatest to the right. Sounds good to me. Boom. 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 Yeah. Okay, so then this is the smallest fraction, right? So for sure. mine, one half is the smallest fraction. And then one fifth. So one fifth is bigger than Wait one half. What, Jimmy, don't stop the production. We're live. Well, one half is huge. What do you mean huge? Well, holy shit. If I got a circle looking like that, and I color in half, and I put a line down the middle, look how much of this thing I'm coloring in. 
Okay, but one fifth five is bigger than two. One fifth is bigger than one. Now, half. look at this. I'll do another circle. I'll color it a bit. Let me show you. I don't know why he's stopping this production this way, guys. There's five pieces in that. Don't you agree? Okay. Five pieces. Well, if I color in one of them, one fifth is way. So I'll label it for you. I'll even label it for you. Yes. One fifth. One half. Jimmy, you're going to have to explain that more to that. One because five is, is bigger than two. One How does that work? Huge. Well, if your denominator has a bigger number in it, it's going to have a lot more pieces to make that whole. So the bigger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. Does that okay. make sense that to you? That does make sense. So then I have to reorder mine. So let's work from the right to the left. There we go. One eleventh, one tenth, one eighth, one fifth, and one half. Now we're thinking. And I like the order of yours as well, when we go cool. from the right to the left. So again, moms and dads, guardians, parents, grandparents, everybody at home, lots of ways to mix it up and have fun with fractions, make it more of a challenge rather than a, oh, why do you keep asking me about fractions moment? So we did the numerator as one. I would, I would recommend you use the triangular pyramid uh, die to begin with when uh, introducing the numerator. Uh, because this only has one through four, it will be easier for new students uh, learning fractions to use uh, this as the numerator yeah. and maybe the 12-sided die as the denominator. Yeah. And then, of course, with advanced, uh, advanced students, you can mix it up all together. And as they get toward middle school, you can even start talking about finding common denominators. Absolutely. Okay. So then we have one more to demonstrate for you guys. And then we'll see if we have the capability to share the screen. We'll see if we can trick Jimmy. Um, but right now we have atomorphs. So we're, we're going to change back to the cards and the map that came in your kit as well. Just got to unfold it. It should look just like this. Oh. I'll hold it for you. Okay, so again, ways to make the game more advanced or easier. The uh, easiest or uh, less challenging way to play the game is to just play it open-handed. So two players can play, and what you're looking for is a way to make a true number sentence. Getting some high cards in here, Jim. I didn't stack the deck right. So oh what you want to do is always keep one of the numbers the same and change the other two. So right here, we're starting with one plus two equals three. That's true. Let's keep the one the same. One plus 10 one equals plus 10. 11. We didn't come up with a good board here. Tim. There you go, you got it. So see how I kept the one and I changed the other two. Now on top of that, I would continue to build. So what if I do... One plus 10 is 11, okay. What if I do... I'm looking to try to set it up. Uh, you got it. Two. Yep, here I got it. Let's see. So here I've got uh, zero. I'm going to put here zero. I'm going to leave the 10. So zero plus 10 That's is 10. 10. Right. And then I would change the 11 to the 10. Right. And so right. you can continue to build on top of the decks. You don't have to clear the mat every time and continue to play in an open handed, uh, taking turns fashion. Okay, if you want to be competitive, you have a friend over, you want to compete against mom or dad, then what you would do is deal out the deck. So you would deal out five cards to each player and they play just a closed hand then. You want to put the deck down, I mean the mat down, Jimmy, and we can just play a hand. All right. These are my cards? Those are yours, Jim. All right. So I got. I'm going to go first. I'm going to change the zero to a nine. So we get nine plus one, nine plus one still equals 10. 10. So it's a true number sentence. I've changed two of the numbers and I've kept one. And then I can replenish my hand with two new cards. Mm. Do you have anything that'll work to me? I sure do. I like your one that you put in the middle. Okay. I'm going to do eight and one. You know what? I'm going to put an eight. Yeah, I'm going to do seven and one makes eight. Nice. 
and then he would replenish his hand. If you ever get stuck, it's turn in two cards and get two new ones. If you get really stuck, get a new set of five cards. So again, ways to play it uh, more advanced and then just more uh, laid back, okay? Now, let's see. So that's, that's it for the uh, booklet. Um, there's a coupon on the back. If you guys would like to come try us all out, we always offer a free trial. Um, and then there's an additional coupon for a membership. So um, you want to see, I think Ms. Donna left us with sharing, screen sharing capability. Hopefully. Walk me through this, Jimmy. Just do this here, and then I'm going to go to the calculator. Yep. Okay. So the point of this trick is we're going to trick Jimmy. So we're going to start with a three-digit number. <laughs> and we're going to multiply that three-digit number by any three or four-digit number. So Jim, why don't I, why don't you get me set up and then you can go sure. hide your eyes. I just need the calculator at the bottom. Right. I think hit the bottom share and then just go to the calculator. They're going to see my tabs. Yeah. That's okay. Okay, there we go. All right. So, Jimmy, you have to go turn around. Okay. And so we're going to start with this three-digit number that I'm going to put into the calculator. So this is a great trick for you to try on mom and dad or your teacher would be great or just a friend, okay? And again, it's just going to build numerical fluency skills. So I'm starting with this number and I'm going to multiply it by a three or four digit number. Hey, somebody here, can you give me a three or four digit number? 632. I have 632. All right, so I'm going to get this answer. I'm not going to say it, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to read the digits in the answer in any order that we choose, and we're going to leave out one, one of the digits, and we're going to see if Jimmy can guess that digit. Okay. So are you guys ready? Are you ready, Jimmy? I'm ready. All right. So if we were in person, I would call up a volunteer and let you all pick a digit, but I'm going to go ahead and pick the digit that we're going to leave out. And then I'm going to mix up the other ones. All right. So you ready, Jim? I'm ready. Six. Mm. Okay. I lost my voice. I got choked up on this. It's so fun. Six. Uh -huh. We're starting again. Okay. Ready? Yep. Six. Two. Three. Six, three. And now if you're playing along at home, you should see the one digit that I didn't read to Jimmy, and he's going to tell me the answer. So what digit did I not read to you, Jim? I'm going with seven. Seven. Absolutely right. Yeah. Bump or something. You're leaving me hang. There you go. All right. So let's try one more. I sure do wish I could have one of you guys from at home uh, play along. Can I have a three or four digit number? 234. Thank you. Oh, that wasn't very interesting though. Let's see, we might have to mix this up a little bit. All right, so you ready, Jim? I'm ready. I'm gonna leave one digit out. So I'm gonna give him nine, nine, eight, eight. So, I read four of the five digits, leaving one of them out. What is the answer? What is the missing digit, Jimmy? Mm, I'm going with two. Two. So for those of you playing along at home, why don't you turn around, Jim, and we can explain this trick to them. Did I get it? You got it. Of course you got it. Of course. I think you would be fired if you didn't get it. <laughs> so uh, let's start with you. Why don't you start the, the premise of the, the, the trick as it is? So the trick starts out with that number that Kim had going on there, it was 423. See that? Now, 423 is a number that's divisible by nine. Okay? How do you know that? And the reason I know that is because there's a divisibility trick for nine. And that trick means that all you have to do is add up the digits. So four plus two plus three. If you add those up and get a number that's divisible by nine, then that number itself is divisible by nine too. So four plus two, is six plus three again is nine. Nine definitely goes into nine. So that means nine must also go into 423. All right, so that's the key to this. You have to start with a number that's divisible by nine. Yeah. Going forward from there, you can multiply that number by any three or four digit number. 
Okay. So let's try 5,217. So then this one. So now we're going to pick uh, so se six of the digits to read, and we're going to sure. leave one out. So I'll just read them in reverse order, Jimmy. One plus Good nine point. is? 10. Plus seven? 17. Plus six? 23. Plus zero? 23. Plus two? <laughs> 25. 25. So now how do I know what's missing? Yeah. Well, if we started with a number that's divisible by nine and multiply it by anything, that number also has to be divisible by nine. So for this number here to be divisible by nine, everything must add up to something that's divisible by nine. So far, we've added up all the way to 25, right? Well, for this number to be divisible by nine, the sum of those digits can't equal 25. Nine doesn't go into 25. Nine does go into 27, though. Which so, is the next multiple of nine. So, go for it. Yep, we're looking for the next multiple of nine, yep. which in this case is it's 27. Yep. So, for us to get there from the 25 that we stopped at, we just need two more. And that's that last digit right there. It's a two. That's how we get to it. So, if you guys want to try this at home, I would recommend you start with 423. Multiply that by any three or four digit number, have mom or dad turn around, you hide your eyes, however you would like to pull the trick off and, and give it a go. Um, whether you use a hand calculator or a, an app calculator, it doesn't matter. Uh, the fun will still exist. And, you know, we cannot wait until we return in person to Math Nights and get to high five That's for sure. and, and show you this in person. But until then, we are so grateful to have this opportunity to have this virtual STEAM fair. I hope you guys are having a blast this week. I know there's a lot more fun to come. Enjoy your boxes. What have I forgotten, Jim? Just make sure you keep show, showing your friends these games because if I have a student come in and show me that they've already seen this game before, that would make my day, guys. That'd be so awesome. It sure would. So thank you, guys. I am going to stop share. Mm -hmm. And I think we have Miss Donna back. Thank you so much. That was so much fun. And Jimmy, you did an awesome job. You were definitely in the hot seat for a while, but I was very impressed. Um, and I loved I, that nine trick was so cool. I thought you had superpowers at the end, um, but but now I too have superpowers. So I'm feeling feeling pretty good. Um, so thank you so much uh, for, for coming on and sharing some really awesome things, including some really awesome dice. Um, and so... Um, great work, Math Mathnasium, and thank you to, to Jimmy and Kama for coming on tonight. So thanks, guys.